Earth will one day die. Assuming things continue progressing naturally as they are now, with no artificial intervention, the sun will expand over the next few billion years, destroying the solar system as we know it today. Earth will go through a lot of changes during this time, as I talk about in my video a tour of Earth one billion years in the future. From the natural drifting away of the moon to the total extinction of all life on this planet, Earth will be a far different place in just a few billion years. But all planets in the solar system will go through shifts just as drastic, if not more so, than Earth's as the solar system ages. And there isn't a planet that shows this more than Saturn. When I see Saturn, one of the first things I think of is instability. Other than Earth with its life, Saturn, at least in my mind, best represents chaos in the solar system. The most likely method for the formation of Saturn's rings was the destruction of a moon we've named Chrysalis that could have been as big as Iapetus. Many moons in the Saturn system have Trojan orbits, meaning multiple moons in the system share the same orbit. Saturn's moon Hyperion has a chaotic rotation, meaning things like its day length and axial tilt vary, to the point where it becomes literally impossible to predict how Hyperion will be rotated on its axis more than a month in advance. Saturn's atmosphere is constantly changing, with storms tearing apart the upper layers, as well as constant meteor rain along the equator from disintegrating ring particles, and a giant hexagon storm on the North Pole bigger than Earth. Not to mention, the atmosphere changes color from brown to blue depending on what season it is. Everything the Saturnian system is goes directly against the highly stable order we expect the solar system to be in. This will only get more drastic as time goes on, as the very existence of Saturn and its moons as we know them today will come into question. Welcome to the fifth episode of my Halcyonic System series, where I explore how various places across the universe will look in the far future. If you're not aware, a Halcyonic System is the term I use to describe any system orbiting a white dwarf, neutron star, black hole, red giant, or other form of dead or dying star. Similarly, any planet in such a system is called a Halcyonic Planet. While the series was originally just about already dead stars, like my videos about pulsars and white dwarfs, it's since changed to include systems in the far future in general. This video will be, as the title suggests, about Saturn and how the Saturnian system will evolve in the future. With that out of the way, most of the major changes involving Saturn won't happen to the planet itself, but the things orbiting it. Saturn's rings are already decaying as we speak, and we generally expect them to be gone in about 100 million years from today. This is mainly because they're constantly falling into Saturn itself, and causing constant meteor showers mostly on the planet's equator. Before this happens, the rings will also slowly darken as they become polluted with dust. This is the reason the smaller rings of Jupiter, Uranus, and Neptune are so dark. But no matter what, assuming no human intervention, Saturn's rings will be gone in about 100 million years. Before I continue, this is a point I should address. As long as humanity is around, the solar system isn't going to have a natural evolution. Given billions of years of deep time to do whatever we want, we will change the solar system in ways that make a natural timeline impossible. For example, preventing the sun from becoming a red giant entirely is not only plausible, but possible under known science, no new physics needed. As long as humanity is around, the solar system isn't going to die like other stars before it. Before this video, we'll be assuming a natural evolution anyway, even though I don't think it's particularly likely, and I don't even think it'll happen. While I don't expect humanity to be around billions of years from now, I do expect that some form of life that can trace its ancestry back to humanity will be and any intelligent life will alter the solar system given this much time. But since that's impossible to predict, this is the natural, unaltered future of Saturn. Anyways, not all of Saturn's rings will be destroyed. The outermost ring, the E-ring, will last much longer. This is because it's being constantly replenished by eruptions of water from Enceladus, meaning it has a constant stream of material for the next few billion years at least, before the expanding sun melts Enceladus and the other moons. Saturn's moons are mostly made of ice. The only reason they are is because Saturn is cold and far from the Sun. When the Sun begins warming up, Saturn and its moons will heat up as well. In about 8 billion years, from what I can tell, the red giant Sun will expand to the point Saturn will be in the habitable zone, where temperatures are right for liquid water to exist. It'll keep getting hotter after that as well. I don't think I need to explain why this will be apocalyptic for all of Saturn's icy moons, most of which are made of more ice than rock. When people hear about Saturn receiving habitable temperatures, they usually met in Saturn's moons becoming ocean worlds. In reality, this probably won't happen. Most of Saturn's moons, aside from Titan, are extremely small. Mimas and Enceladus are about the size of the asteroid Vesta, for example. They're only able to become round because ice is easier to bend than rock. Mimas and Enceladus have no chance when the sun expands, and will likely slowly evaporate their icy material into space for about half a billion years before the sun becomes a white dwarf and things cool down fast. Surprisingly, this could actually cause Saturn's rings to make a comeback, for a time, as some of the evaporated material from Mimas, Enceladus, Tethys, Dione, Rhea, and Iapetus collect in an orbit. 
These new rings will probably be extremely thin and nearly invisible, but could be extensive, expanding out for millions of miles and surrounding Saturn in a gigantic bluish haze, similar to how the E-ring looks today. These moons are likely too small to ever become habitable ocean worlds, and they'll probably just act like big comets for a while. But you may notice that I haven't talked about one moon yet. Saturn's six other major moons are all interesting, from Enceladus's geysers to Mimas's giant craters, Dione potentially having cryovolcanic activity, and Iapetus's iconic black and white surface. But there's one moon that puts all the others to shame, one of only two moons in the whole solar system with a significant atmosphere. Titan. Titan currently has an atmosphere thicker than Earth's, and methane seas on its surface. It also probably has geologic activity, but it only keeps its atmosphere for two reasons. It's cold and inside Saturn's magnetic field. These things won't be true when the sun becomes a red giant, and so it's very likely that Titan will lose its atmosphere, seas, and icy surface to the unrelenting sun, like all the other moons. Titan is currently migrating away from Saturn. This may not seem too significant on the surface, the moon does the same thing. It's currently moving away from Earth. But this has serious consequences for the entire Saturnian system. Titan heavily influences the axial tilt of Saturn. As Titan moves away from its planet, Saturn's axial tilt will begin to increase. This, in turn, will cause Titan's orbit to begin to destabilize, further moving it outwards, since the planet tilting will cause Titan's orbit to shift as well. This then only accelerates the increasing of Saturn's axial tilt, which pushes Titan out further, in a self-sustaining feedback loop that will eventually lead to the end of the Saturnian system as a whole. This is still unconfirmed, but models of the Saturnian system show that what I'm about to say is not only possible, but likely. At some arbitrary point in the future, anywhere from a few billion years from today to several tens of billions of years, depending on Titan's migration rate, Titan will move far enough away from Saturn to cause an irreversible change in the planet's axial tilt, flipping Saturn on its side like Uranus is today. This could cause the ejection of Titan away from Saturn as a whole, leaving it to wander the dead or dying solar system alone. In the future, Titan will cause Saturn to fall over on its side, and then get ejected from the Saturnian system. We don't know when this will happen, or even if it will, due to uncertainties in how fast Titan is currently moving away from Saturn, and if the current rate will continue. But as I said earlier, this could happen within a few billion years, when the Sun is a red giant, to several tens of billions of years, long after the Sun has become a white dwarf. A single small moon tipping over a planet almost a hundred times more massive than Earth seems impossible, but multiple studies I've read support this. Both of them will be linked in the description. I can't find any information about the fate of the other Saturnian moons at this point, but I can only imagine they'll be significantly affected. But that's a lot of talk about Saturn's moons in the far future, but what will happen to Saturn itself? We already know it'll lose its rings and potentially flip over thanks to the ejection of Titan, but what will the environment of this planet be like? That question depends heavily on what time period we're talking about. In my opinion, the most interesting Saturn will come when it's in the habitable zone, as when the sun becomes a white dwarf, it'll just be cold again. Nobody knows exactly what Saturn will be like when it enters the habitable zone, but we do know the environment will be drastically different from today. Saturn's atmosphere is mostly covered in a thick haze layer that gives the planet its brown color, but it's mostly made of cold materials. Saturn's upper cloud layers are also made of ammonia ice. Both the haze and the clouds won't be able to survive the hotter temperatures, and they could give way to clouds made of water, which today are confined to the lower layers of Saturn's atmosphere. How Saturn would look from space around this time I can't say, as I can't find any sources that talk about it, but I assume it would still be round, just with a different cloud and haze composition. But this far into the future, we can really only guess as to what Saturn itself will be like. We have a pretty good idea of what its moons will be like, but not the planet itself. After the Sun becomes a white dwarf, Saturn and whatever is left of its moon system after the potential ejection of Titan will begin cooling down as it spirals away from the dead Sun. Sometime arbitrarily far into the future, Saturn will likely be ejected from the solar system due to a stellar encounter. Given trillions of years, it's bound to happen eventually. The fate of Saturn at this point will be the fate of all planets orbiting far enough away from their stars to make ejections easy. Saturn will share the same fate as Titan, ejected from the solar system to wander space for the rest of eternity. We have no idea when or even if Saturn will be ejected, but given the true scale of deep time, the chances aren't looking good. Eventually, all planets will be ejected from their stars quadrillions of years in the future. It isn't something unique to Saturn. The galaxy is chaotic, and given this much time, a star or stellar remnant will inevitably pass close enough to another star to eject its planets. But hopefully, I've shown just how chaotic planetary systems can be, even if they look stable. Saturn is in a very delicate, chaotic mess, just waiting for an opportunity to fall apart. It's already done so in the past, and will again. The ringed gas giant we know today won't be around for much longer, as the Saturn of the far future will be an entirely different world. Thank you for watching. 
If you enjoyed, check out my other videos about space.